What are the NFT blue chip projects you should know about and how can you find NFT blue chip projects in the first place? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins and welcome to the NFT Brief. In this video, I'm gonna walk through exactly where you can find NFT blue chips and follow their price action and also help you learn a little bit more about some of the key blue chip projects. Hope you enjoy the content in this video all about NFT blue chips. If you do, don't forget to hit thumbs up. And if you wanna get more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. First, a caveat, none of this is financial advice and NFTs are incredibly risky and so is crypto. So you really got to do your own research. What I'm sharing is simply for informational purposes based on my experiences. Now, I got into crypto in 2016. The crypto market was radically different in 2016 and it was seen as a lot more scammy. Now, some of the blue chip projects were quite different to what the blue chip projects are today. To show you what I mean, I have CoinMarketCap open for today. And you can see that the top 10 projects are Bitcoin, no surprise, Ethereum, uh, Tethers, which is a stable coin, BNB, USD, XRP, Luna, Sol, Cardano, and Avalanche. Now, at the time of recording this video, I have some Avalanche, I have some Cardano. Uh, I had XRP a few years ago and then sold it because I don't like it. I, I sold Sol, uh, perhaps that was a mistake. Um, I did a BNB at one point and then I sold it. Um, I have Ethereum and I mostly have Bitcoin because I believe it's the blue chip project for the crypto space. Now, if I were to go back to the coin market cap when I got in, to the space back in 2016 you can you can see that it looked radically different so on the left this is the current coin market cap top 10 and on the right this is what it looked like back in the 20 or on the 25th of december 2016 when i got into the space so bitcoin and ethereum were still number one and two uh xrp was number three now it's number six uh litecoin was in the number four which used to be called silver to bitcoin's gold and this has dropped uh well below uh to 21 um monero was in the top 10 ethereum classic which has really dropped down dash made safe coin which i haven't heard of in years neem steam and some other coins which have disappeared now the reason i'm going through all of this is to show you that the blue chip projects bitcoin and ethereum have so far stood the test of time whereas a lot of other the other of these projects have either changed radically or dropped out of the top 10. And when you consider that dozens of NFTs projects are being launched and minted every day, it's fair to say that many of these NFT projects are on the express train to zero or are going to disappear. And that's why for me, it makes sense to try and find or perhaps invest in NFT blue chip projects. So that sent me down a journey of figuring out what these blue chip projects are and deciding to learn more about them. Now, unfortunately, NFTs are not the same as cryptocurrencies, so it's a bit different or a bit more difficult to figure out what blue chip projects are. But the easiest way you can do it is just go to CoinMarketCap and then click on NFT, and it'll show you the most popular NFT tokens or currencies that you can buy. But I was actually more interested in non-fungible tokens rather than the currencies behind them. So I'm going to go over to the NFT tab. Uh, and right now, at the time of recording this video, the top NFT collections are WonderPals, Clonex, um, and some of these other projects, Zuki, CryptoPunks, Invisible Friends, Tree Landers, Board Ape Yacht Club, which everybody's heard of, Mutant Ape Yacht Club, and Murphers. Uh, now, because NFTs are a bit different to cryptocurrencies, this can change quite a lot. And I've checked this a few times over the past few weeks, and it really does vary. Or what you see here really does vary. So I took out a subscription for a premium tool called Nansen. Uh, it's not cheap, and it does DeFi and decentralized finance and Web 3.0, and not just NFTs. But they recently rolled out a new section that I was particularly excited by. It's called NFT indexes. And if I go over to NFT indexes, uh, so they have NFTs categorized by use case, so social NFTs, gaming NFTs, art NFTs, and meta NFTs. Particularly excited by the blue chip NFT section on Nansen. So I wanted to learn first about their methodology before I started diving into the projects. And if I go over to the methodology section, you can see that it's the first index constructed by Nansen, uh, but it's 10 notable, notable and classic NFTs organized by market cap. In other words, it's kind of similar to what you would see uh, on the homepage of CoinMarketCap when you're looking at particular currencies. Uh, so, it's, so I suppose it's kind of similar to what you'd see here. The other thing they say is that these indexes uh, have attained recognition as top tier NFT collections among market participants. In other words, they're not scammy projects or rogue pulls and they're much less likely to go to zero. Uh, that said, any project can go to zero, but these ones are probably safer plays if you have the ETH or if you could afford to buy into them. So what are the projects that are on the NFT uh, blue chip index on Nansen? Before I show you that, it is interesting to see that right now we're in an NFT bear market. So you can see that the blue chips have actually dropped in price quite a lot. Uh, whereas Bitcoin at the time of recording this video has actually increased from $35,000 to $42,000. Um, so Bitcoin is dominating the market. Uh, so that is one way you can use tools like this to figure out what to, to buy. 
Uh, anyway, let's scroll down to see what the top projects are. So it's saying that the top projects, and I'm going to compare these to what CoinMarketCap is presenting, are Board 8 Yacht Club, so this is number one, whereas here Board 8 Yacht Club is number eight. The CryptoPunks, which is number two, whereas here the CryptoPunks is number five. V Friends, which uh, for some reason is not featured here in the top 10. Uh, Sandbox Lands, uh, again, I don't see Sandbox Lands here. Uh, World of Women, uh, not here. Uh, Artblocks. Board Ape, Canon Club, MeBits, and CyberKong. It's also interested to see that the way both tools are sourcing the stats are different. So if I look at Board Ape Yacht Club, we can see that it has a market cap for approximately uh, 900,000 each and a volume over the past 24 hours of 362 each. Uh, whereas those statistics are quite a bit different uh, on Coin Market Cap. So it has a estimated market cap of over 1 million ETH and the average price is 94.12 ETH, whereas here it appears to be uh, presenting the floor at 84 ETH. So the information is being presented differently uh, on both tools. And that does really show you how new the new the NFT market is. The other interesting insight from using Nansen is that the blue chip NFTs, at least right now, are mostly social NFTs. So these are NFTs that you'll see people using on Twitter or as their picture for profile uh, or that have become viral or well known in the media. So if you go to Board Ape Yacht Club uh, and this will take a second to load. Um, and then I should be able to go to the relevant OpenSea page uh, using the official links. Um, and I can also see the average price and volume for this blue chip and NFT. And I can see the price range uh, and it gets, gets some more stats uh, about it. So let's go over to OpenSea. And now I can see what Board Ape Yacht Club looks like. And, and these are examples or good examples of popular social uh, NFTs. Um, so everybody knows about Board Ape Yacht Club, but some of the projects that I do like, uh, so I do have a World of Women NFT, so I got this a few months ago, um, and this is another social NFT, and if you hold World of Women, you actually get uh, airdrops each month from World of Women um, project creators and artists, and you get them deposited free to your wallet, which is fantastic, so I, I do really like this project, even though it has dropped quite a little bit uh, in price um, over the past few weeks. The other blue chip project that I own is CyberKongs. So I'm a member of the CyberKongs community. Now, interestingly, Nansen has categorized CyberKongs as a game uh, NFT. Uh, and there is plans for CyberKongs to roll out uh, a type of game uh, based on this particular NFT and also based on their other project, CyberKongs VX. However, CyberKongs is a bit more than a game. When you're a member of CyberKongs, you also get access to an exclusive Discord community where you can get on whitelists for other NFT projects and talk with other NFT holders. So it's also a type of community. And I'd also argue that the CyberKongs NFT uh, is a social NFT as well, because you'll see CyberKongs holders using this as their avatar uh, on Twitter much like with Board Ape Yacht Club. So that does suggest to me that you probably need to approach the categorization with a pinch of salt. Because uh, to be honest, the use cases for many of these NFTs is still either new or emerging or developing. Um, CyberKong's only really released details about their game um, over the past few months. So that is something to bear in mind when you're considering if you wanted to buy a social NFT, a metaverse NFT, an art NFT or a game. Uh, that said, I was interested by the art NFTs because I do like generative art. So let's click on this to learn more about these. So looking at the Art20 index, the top projects are Artblocks, Lost Poets, and Damien Hurst's The Currency. So I have these open here on OpenSea. You can see what Lost, Lost Poets uh, represents, and it's created by the NFT collector and generative artist pack. Uh, you may have already heard of Artblocks, so they're the project behind uh, lots of blue chip generative art projects. They either curate them or release them with artists that they've collaborated with. They're perhaps one of the most famous uh, projects from Artblocks is Chromey Squiggles uh, by Snowfro. Um, some of them are at 7.49 each. Some of them cost quite a bit more than that. So that is also worth checking out. Uh, and I also like Damien Hurst's uh, The Currency. So I'll just go over to his OpenSea page. So he's a real world artist. Um, He's a real world artist who also creates NFTs based on his real world art. Uh, so he's kind of getting at the criticism that NFTs, you know, are nothing more than images. And so I understand that the currencies actually correspond to real world artworks locked away in a mysterious vault in London. Um, anyway, the reason why I'm showing you all of this is that you can use Nansen to figure out what the top 10 blue chip projects are. And then if you decide you want social NFTs or game NFTs or art NFTs, you can dive a little bit more into the individual projects. In other words, it's a good way of doing your own research. And the ones that you need to know about, at least at the time of recording this video, are Board 8, The Op Club, CryptoPunks, Gary Vaynerchuk's V Friends, Sandbox Lands, World of Women, Cool Cats, 
uh, the Art Blocks project, which I talked about a few minutes ago, Board Ape Kennel Club, MeBits, and Cyber Kongs. Now, unfortunately, Nansen isn't that cheap at $149 a month. So if you're doing your own research, chances are you're buying an expensive project and you would factor this into the cost of your purchase. If you want to track the performance of the NFT market as a whole, just go to CoinMarketCap and look for NFT index and you can sort by the last day, seven days, one month, three months, and that way you can gauge what's happening with the NFT market and if we're in a bull or a bear. And then to learn about individual projects, just use the NFT tab and go to overall NFT stats and top collections with the caveat that this is going to be different to what you'll get in other software and tools. You can also just go to the individual NFT marketplaces uh, and just click on stats and click on rankings. And then you can see what types of projects uh, are trending in terms of floor price um, or volume over the past 24 hours, seven days and 30 days. Um, again, this is with the caveat that this is just what's happening on OpenSea and not other NFT marketplaces. Uh, now there is a free tool I want to show you, which I think is excellent. It's called Dune Analytics. It's a type of Web 3.0 analytics platform uh, built for and by the community. Um, you don't need any technical skills to use it. Just visit Dune Analytics and you can search for OpenSea and you can see the monthly volume. So if I look at the monthly volume for February, you can see we're down on January, even though there was three less days in February. So if I go scroll down and I go to the daily volume, uh, you can also see that the daily volume is down as well. So there's not much happening in the NFT market at the moment, but you can also search for individual projects or the blue chip projects that I've talked about a few minutes ago on Dune Analytics and learn more about them. So I've already searched for Cyber Kongs so I can see what this project looks like. And it's not, it wasn't possible to see what these look like in Nansen. So this is why I like doing analytics. Uh, there's lots of great stats that I can dive into in terms of sales, total volume, um, and so on. But if I scroll down, I can also see uh, this presented as a chart. Um, and I can also see individual transactions and how many unique holders there are versus uh, how many NFTs exist within this specific project. And of course, you can search for any of the blue chip projects that I've talked about. So if I type in World of Women, uh, that should come up as well. Uh, so that's a good way of learning more about blue chip projects too. So hope you enjoyed the content in this video all about blue chip NFTs and how to find them and learn more about them. And I hope it helps you find blue chip NFTs so you can get more involved in the space. If you did enjoy the content in this video, hit thumbs up. And to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.